this is the pre-debate uh, interview for the school. St. John's Girls. And uh, which other school? The Harry Girls. So, which side have you been given a promotion? Your poser side. How much confident are you with the side you were given? Actually, we can talk about 92%. 92% confidence? Yeah. How much confidence are you now that you're saying that 92%? 101. 101. Yes. So I'm hoping this debate is going to be a heated debate and let's see what 92 plus 101 is going to give us. Okay, thank you so much and see you on stage. Sun kissed from the beautiful beaches in Mombasa. This is the Great Debaters Contest and I am Austin Yumbok. I am Mariam Bashar and welcome to the show. Today's epic showdown will be between St. John's Kaloleni and Bahari Girls Secondary School and they are debating on whether developing countries should discourage rural to urban migration. It's a timely topic for young people and we can't wait to see the debaters take the stage. Proposal number one, you have three minutes. What do we understand by developing countries? These are countries that are trying to grow economically. What about rural area? It is a place outside town or a city. And the urban center is a geographical area constituting a city or town. Dora Kwekwe, Bahari Girls. It's funny how you'd want to migrate to the urban area. Well, there's something called decentralization. Job opportunities coming to the rural area. Most of the urban industries are moving to the outlying suburban areas, taking jobs with them, which will be more efficient for the rural people to access job opportunities and improve their living standard. Breaking of the family and cultural bond. This breaking of the family bond, whereby my mom will leave me, go to maybe Saudi Arabia in search for work. This will call this will cause marital breakup and deny conjugal rights between my mom and my dad. Also, it will break the cultural bond, whereby I'll go to the city, I'll adopt the new culture, like us Swahili people. Girls are supposed to wrap themselves with lessons while inside the house, but when you go to the city, you'll want to wear those booty shorts, which are not advised. Balanced development of infrastructure. This is cause whereby all of you will be traveling to the urban areas, forgetting that you have the rural areas to develop, whereby our taxes make us to, to gain, to support the rural area, whereby the, the, the government will want to get money from us which our land which we are so proud of. Increase in prices of goods and services. Many people from the rural areas will come to the cities, raising the cost of living. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to make your opening statement. I'm Noreen Bilha from St. John's Girls Second School. Our motion today says, Developing countries should discourage rural, rural to urban migration. What are, what are these developing countries? These are the countries that are still developing. Example given are the countries from East, from East Africa. That is, that is, we have ex, uh, countries like Kenya and Tanzania. The biggest question is, do they, should, they, should, the gov, should the government of these countries discourage rural to urban migration? Of course no, why? Because you cannot expect this, these, two, these two centers, that is the rural, the rural and the urban centers, to develop by themselves or independently. That can't be possible, because the, the, both the rural and the urban depend on each other. To start with, to look for job opportunities. You'll find that Many, country, many, many industries are located, in the, are located in the urban areas. So these people have to move, these, the people from the, rural area, from the rural areas have to move to the urban areas, that is to look for jobs. Therefore, this will help them to improve their, li their, their living standards by the, by the money, they, by the earnings they get. Secondly, I say that 
the government should encourage the government should encourage rural to urban migration because it leads to develop, equal development of these two, of these of both the urban and the rural areas. How? You'll find that when people, not all the people who move from rural to urban areas permanent, permanently stay to the urban areas. No, there are some there are some people who when they when they move from the rural areas and go to the urban areas, they of course get the earnings and they use these earnings to get them. Let's look in the agricultural sector. They get the, the modern tools of how to improve their agricultural activities. That is through the modern, modern tools they get and the fertilizers, which will help them when they, when they go back to their, to their villages, they'll of course use these things that they have earned in the urban areas to improve, to improve their agricultural sector. This will help them to, earn, to increase their food production in the rural areas. And again, the, it's, the food that, it's, the food, it's the food that has increased in the rural, in the rural areas that, are still, that still provide the raw materials that the urban, urban centers require in their industries. So I therefore don't see the point of my uh, fellow proposers saying that the government should not discourage. No. We see people saying one nation, one Kenyan, one land. But why should they struggle with their energy saying that these people should not be should not be allowed to go to the urban centers? Thank you. We'll hear rebuttals now, beginning with a proposition. You have three minutes. I strongly deny the point of my fellow opponent when she said that the industries are located in the urban areas, I want to tell you that these industries are not located in the urban areas. They are located in the outskirts of the urban areas, which are nearer to the rural areas than to the urban areas. With courtesy of Bahari Girls, Maureen Stanley strongly proposing the motion that says developing countries, developing countries should discourage rural to urban migration. Just to begin with, overpopulation. I totally think that's absurd. Why do I say this? Because it leads to increase in population, thus leading to overcrowding of people in cities, roads, countries, which, if I try to connect this, brings about the immoral behavior. Let me give you an example. Go to Nairobi, Casanova, and see what those people are doing. Stripers, seriously striping. Have you ever seen a striper? Casanova, seriously striping. That is overpopulation. Inadequate social amenities. Just to give a vivid example of hospitals and schools, whereby when the rural migrants come to urban areas, you'll find that this will create the pressure on the existing facilities, leading to inadequate social amenities. Let me just pose a small question. Do you think if it was not for adequate, not inadequate, our beautiful, gorgeous, lovely looking Mariam Bishar will be on that seat right now? Just have a look at her. Could she be on that seat right now, if not for adequate social amenities, not inadequate social amenities? Shanty towns. In addition to the explanation of the shanty towns, people are forced to construct houses made of pieces of wood, metals, and so forth because of their low standards of living, especially on the edges of big cities, thus leading to the development of shanty towns. Unemployment. We have to understand that urban centers cannot cope with the large influx of laborers, thus leading to unemployment becoming rampant. Why do I mean? Why do I mean? Due to the increased competition of the few available jobs that we have, the result is that some of those migrants from the rural areas, by the time they come to urban areas, tend to become even more poorer than they were before. Thank you. Opposes, you have three minutes for your cross-examination. Uh, my name is Halima Komora from St. John's Academy. I'm here to oppose the motion that says developing, developing countries should discourage rural to, uh, to urban migration. It's evident to us that even the organization of this contest have placed this contest in a city, which is Mombasa City. So I'm wondering if my fellow colleagues here are trying to convince me that rural to urban migration 
it should be discouraged, first and foremost, for education purposes. A good example, for, this, for education purposes, people are moving from rural, rural areas to urban areas to gain education, whereby it causes in invasion and innovation. Most of the students who come in the urban areas and study, they gain skills. The skills which help them to develop the rural areas and the families there, whereby they go there, educate them about the importance of education, what they'll gain in education. Secondly, labor mobility. Most of the people in the city, they see themselves so special in a matter that there are some works they can't do. But take an example for a person who is coming from the rural areas. He gets to the city because he has come for the hustle to get money to help the families in the rural areas. He gets there, he's told that the jobs are there, but it's not a high job, it's a minor job. Let's say like in a factory, you're supposed to like calling the machine. Most of the people who come from the rural areas are ready to take on those ta tasks because they believe that when they get there, work hard, they'll finally continue gaining ranks. Finally, expansion of, of cities. Most of the people move from the rural areas to the urban areas. When they move, of course, there is no space in the outside of the city. They start developing the city in the outskirts, making also the, the outskirts to be cities. Good example, we can take Nairobi and Thika. In Nairobi, yes, people are moving from the rural to the urban areas, but how? We can see there is Juja and Gudurai between Thika and Nairobi. That place is expanding. In conclusion, I say that I encourage rural to urban migration because it has made us students and other people to develop skills and uh, ideas which help the rural areas. Thank you. Thank you very much to the audience. The proposers have been asked, how do people become poorer when they choose to migrate from rural areas to urban areas, uh, where, while there is employment mostly in urban areas? And of course, the opposition have been asked, doesn't rural to urban migration diminish the capacity of people to earn, especially when it comes when, in respect to agricultural matters? So would they not be better off uh, staying in their rural areas and perhaps engaging in farming? We'll have them respond to those questions. Third proposer, you have three minutes. To answer the question of the audience, you've asked that, how does rural to urban migration make a person coming from the rural area even more poorer? Let's take an example of a person coming from the rural area to the urban center. We all know that most people coming from the rural areas lack sufficient funds to sustain themselves in the urban centers. So this person lacking the funds to rent a home will end up living in the streets where if he or she could have stayed in the rural area, she could be living in a better house than a street. On to my first, I'm Asha Mohammed, present oh, for the motion that rural to urban migration should be discouraged. On to my first point, decline in agriculture. Imagine, the, we all know that as the people from the rural areas are the ones who are conducting agriculture. These countries that are developing solely depend on agriculture for their food. Imagine a large percentage of the people living in the rural areas migrating to the urban centers. Where will these people get their food? From AIDS? Certainly not, because it will never be enough. Spread of diseases, this is due to the congestion that will be caused by rural to urban migration. When the people are many, we'll take the example of the Kenya ferry, this place is usually congested because people are moving from one place to another in search for jobs. Now, how will this lead to spread of diseases? There's a communicable disease that we all know to be very dangerous, TB. This is a disease that can be transmitted by just a cough or a sneeze from a person. Imagine one person sneezing in that ferry can transmit that disease to almost 20 people present in that ferry. Development of street families, I've already addressed it when I was answering the question by the audience. 
low prices for agricultural products. Here in the urban areas, all of us want to eat canned beans, all of us want to eat the good stuff. So who is going to buy that product from the, from the rural area if we don't encourage them to stay in the rural area, do the agriculture and buy their stuff instead of us manufacturing things or getting the products from other countries and using them for food. Government loses money. This is when a person from a rural area migrates to the urban centers. We all know that these people are poor and are capable and willing to do anything and everything to get a living. So some of them even indulge themselves in criminal activities. Hence, you will find that if they are arrested, the government, obviously, they don't have the money to pay the lawyers. So they'll end up using public lawyers who are paid by the government. This money that is used to pay the lawyer could have been used to do a project in the country rather than paying for the lawyer to defend this criminal. Provides market for inferior goods and services. Most of us here in the urban centers will want to wear Gucci, will want to wear Donatella Versace. None of us wants to wear that Mtumba cloth. So where is this Mtumba that is being imported by the government going to be sold if the rural area will not stay where they're supposed to stay? Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to answer the audience. A point said of um, depletion of agriculture in the rural areas due to the rural urban migration. Okay, first we get that the, uh, the agriculture that is going on in the rural areas without the ideas snatched from the urban areas like the use of fertilizers have actually the ideas that these people pick from the urban areas, they take it to the rural areas to uh, deal with agriculture. The ideas have brought some improvement in our agricultural field. Another point said of um, breaking of families' bonds. It should be uh, minded that we are not talking of a permanent rural to urban migration. The rural to urban migration, we can get it to be uh, temporary. That's, uh, that's it we're talking of. A person can go to the, uh, to the urban area, get some ideas of what's uh, what good there, then take it to the, um, to the rural areas. We, we, uh, my fellow uh, proposer here has said that there is break, breakage of family bonds, like the mom can go to the urban areas and then the family miss the mom. What, what is this mismens? We are calling, we are taking the mismens to be so important. And what's good between the mismens we are having and what the, the ideas that are going to be brought from the urban areas to at least uh, improve the life of the people in the, in the rural areas. Nyadzua Dorcas from St. George's Girls Secondary School, uh, opposing the motion says developing countries should discourage rural to urban migration. This uh, transforma tra transformation of ideas. We get that these people move from the rural to the urban areas. They get the ideas, i.e. We, we have uh, the farming ideas, like improving of the farming, we get the fertilizers, whereby they, uh, they, they improve the, the, the rate at which the, the products that we're going to get from our, our, our pro, uh, the productions we're going to get from our farming. We also have the development of hidden ideas that are in the rural areas. We find that there are people who are in the rural areas, they are just stay there, they are put off with the ideas they're having on things they could be, ideas that they could be developed and actually come up with a good thing. We get to know that these people in the rural areas, they lack the facilities, they lack the, they lack the support, the, the support um, and the motivation to at least improve what they have. We have these people that come up naturally with their own ideas. We get them stayed, uh, they are just in the rural areas, they are seated there, no one is to motivate them. Because in the rural areas, all of them that are there, they were born there, they, they, they just go with the traditions. They don't have these new things. So, uh, like you are encouraging us to, to stop, you are telling us to stop the rural urban migration so as to, re, to, to just have our life in the, in the, in the urban areas that is to, to maintain our amusements with our family we have this thing of unemployment but uh, see uh, and then another thing said here about unemployment seriously when these people come from the rural urban migration in the urban areas if you are determined to come to the urban area and get a job I'm very sure you won't miss even one job it's uh, if you have the uh, attitude that you're coming to the urban areas to get a job of your own likes but uh, of your own likes that is your 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 you're not qualified for a certain job and you're like coming for a certain job. But I'm sure if you want to do anything and have passion to do something, you'll come to the urban area and do anything that is available. Thank you. We'll now hear final statements. Proposers, you have one minute. They say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But sometimes, even the thing that doesn't kill you can make you weaker. Okay, my fellow proposers, my fellow opposers that is sorry, have said that 
if you're determined to get a job in the city, you'll get a job. We all know that these people from the rural areas don't have the adequate education for them to get the jobs present in the urban centers. Now, it, when the government realizes that most people are moving from the rural areas to the urban areas, they will tend to want and develop the rural areas because they're asking, they want to control the number of people in the urban centers. So let's ask ourselves, if these people migrate to the rural areas, is the government they migrate to the urban centers. Is the government going to want and concentrate in these places? Because due to the presence of farms, the government will want to build roads to transport the farm goods in the rural areas to bring them to the urban centers. So let's discourage rural to urban migration for a better Kenya. Thank you. Opposers, you also have one minute for your final submission. You're talking of a... Uh, uh, discouraging the rural to urban migration. Okay, here I stand, Yadzua. I'm encouraging the rural to urban migration. Saying this, um, when we have the rural to urban migration, actually you have said from unemployment, we can get that from our, uh, my fellow uh, uh, opposer here say that we have to attain education from the urban areas. So if we have attainance of education from the urban areas, I'm very sure we start it from the, uh, from the attaining of education. You get the education, and after, uh, after that, you're not uh, capable of getting any job in this town. So to my conclusion, I encourage the rural to urban migration so as we have a balanced level of life, because you're actually not talking about a permanent rural to urban migration. It can also be temporary. Thank you. <laughs> Dora Kwekwe, you had a nice introduction. You began so well, but then you became very nervous and all of a sudden you went to sit down. As a good debater, you should not underutilize or overutilize time. So the time factor really worked against you. Maureen Stanley, uh, you began so well rebattling the points, but then you can enhance your battling skills. Then I do not understand how stripping was contributing to overpopulation. That had to come out well. So you should better your mastery of topic and then try to be coherent in your arguments. Asha Mohammed, I liked your confidence. You tried raising very logical, highly coherent arguments. I liked how you brought out the idea of communicable diseases. I could see some degree of conviction and passion in the manner in which you're raising your argument. So that was very good. St. John's, Noreen, Halima, and Yasua, all of you are great speakers. However, you need to organize yourself. Organize yourself so that you can have what we can call economy of words. You have good submissions, but you explain a submission or a point with lots of words. And sometimes then you find out that you had maybe five points to give and you end up just giving two because you have a lot of things to say, but the words, the economy of words is not there. So you want to work on that. Just a few point outs like Halima, you want to work on your comparatives, high job, minor job, and such things. Nyasua, very passionate, confident, yes. Organize your thoughts so that you can have that. I think it was fair and you did well. So congratulations to the two teams. Dora Kweke must have panicked because she did not put her points maybe well in order. Otherwise, you're a good speaker. Uh, Maureen, confident. Yeah, we like the confidence. But I think outstanding in that group is Aisha Mohammed. Uh, the only outdoing you are outdoing would have been you are not composed. You are kind of rushing, and I don't know where you are rushing to, but you had very good points, elaborate points, and I like the way you raised your points. However, next time slow down a bit. On St. John's girls' team, you did well. Noreen, maybe you organize your points well. Uh, outstanding in that group, I'd say, was Dorcas. You're confident, full of energy. Uh, Halima, too, did well for the team. And I'll just want to say, let the best team win. Bahari girls, the judges awarded you 60%. Kindly give them a round of applause. Your opponent, St. John's Kaloleni Girls, the judges awarded you 62%, making you the winners. 
congratulations to the two teams on stage and we'd like to express our infinite gratitude to our audience and our viewers back home for watching. Keep it locked on KBC Channel 1 for the Great Debaters Contest. I have been your host, Austin Yombok. And I am Mariam Bishar. Thank you for watching. So, could you give us something how the debate was behind the dance? It was fine. How the competition. Although we lost, but uh, we kind of got encouraged to do more next time. If the debate will be there, we do more and we more. And I hope you are going to do better next time. Yes, we will. Thank you so much for Bahari Girls now. Okay. Bahari Girls, we appreciate you guys because you have given us a tough competition. Yes, we have win, but still we have won the debate. But you people have given us the best fight ever. We love you guys. We are going to be glad. Well, you've had it from two great giants who just commented about each other. And I hope next time they come and give us something better on the platform.